evening with Fred Olsen Cruise Lines. My name is Duncan, I'm one of the corporate team here at Not Just Travel. If you do have any questions, pop them in the chat box and we will do a Q&A at the end of the presentation. In the meantime, I would like to bring in and introduce you to Kerry, the lovely Kerry from Fred Olsen. Hi Kerry, how are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you, Duncan? I'm very good. Thank you for joining us and, um, and thank you for your time this evening. I'm, I'm very excited for what you have to offer. Um, guys, If, like I say, if you do have any questions, do pop them in the chat box um, and we will do a Q&A at the end of the presentation. Um, if you could, if you can hear me OK, if you could pop in the chat to say yes, you can hear me, that would be awesome. To see if any comments come through, Kerry, just to make sure everybody can hear us loud and clear. Yeah, no worries. Just uh, like I say, if you can hear me, if you could put a thumbs up or you could say, yes, you can hear me, that would be amazing. Excellent, excellent. So, brilliant. Lots of people can hear us, Kerry. So, we yes. will carry on without further ado. So, I'll hand over to Kerry um, and I'll come back in at the end and we'll talk about the QA. Fabulous. Thanks, Duncan. Well, uh, we really appreciate you um, having us uh, with you tonight. Um, so I'm, my name's Kerry. I'm going to talk to you all about Fred Olsen Cruise Lines. So um, we are very different. There are obviously a lot of cruises um, and cruise ships in the industry. So I'm going to tell you what makes Fred Olsen very different. So you may be wondering, and we, you may be wondering who our target market are. Who are we for? What makes Fred Olsen very different in the market? What's our main campaign message for peaks turn of year? Now, obviously, December, end of December going into January is the peak booking month for all travel. Uh, so what are we doing? What campaigns and what offers and special deals are there out there for you? What's new at Fred Olsen Cruise Lines? You may have cruised with us uh, as a regular guest. You may have never cruised with us before. You may never have heard of us. So I'm going to talk you through all about Fred Olsen Cruise Lines. We'll look at our ships. We'll look at our cabins. We'll look at the entertainment on board. We'll look at the destinations that you can visit as well, particularly into 2024 and 2025. And of course, what's there to see and do on board? A lot of people have a misconception that being on a small ship, that you aren't going to have the opportunities to do things that you would do on big ships. Uh, so we're going to run through exactly what you can do on board our ships as well. But first off, I wanted to talk you through our summary. So in recent years, we've seen a new era emerging in the cruising industry. There is a trend for everything to get bigger and busier. And for a cruise is often seen as an alternative to a large luxury resort. But this is not us. Here at Fred Olsen Cruise Lines, we believe there is another way to cruise the world, a way that's based on five generations of seafaring, where cabins are called cabins and our ships actually look like ships, and where the journey is just as important as the destination that you'll be visiting. Here at Fred Olsen Cruise Lines, in our world, we believe that smaller is better, and we believe in keeping the experience on board our ships uncrowded, warm and friendly, treating our passengers like guests, like the family-run cruise line that we are. Of course, it would be easy to follow the crowds and go with the trends, but we never will because this is our way of cruising the world. It's the Olsen way. So out of that, what you've probably picked up on is that our target market is very much for those people that really do want smaller cruise ships. They don't want the big uh, monsters of the ocean, as we call them here at Fred Olsen Cruise Lines. So much, much smaller ships. Um, and there are many, many benefits to this. We can go to destinations the big ships simply can't get to. There's less people on board, so it's less crowded as well. Uh, we are also a family-run cruise line, and this year, 2023, has been our 175th anniversary. That's correct, 175 years. The Fred Olsen family have been sailing the seven seas. And again, I'll come on to talk to you a little bit more about our history in just a moment. So let's look at who are we for. So you may have heard Fred Olsen Cruise Lines, you may have certainly been on other cruise ships, and you just want to know a bit more about us. So, like I just said, there is many, many cruise ships out there, many, many different cruise lines also. Now, I strongly believe here at Fred Olsen Cruise Lines, there is a ship and there is a cruise company for absolutely everybody out there. And it's making sure that we're getting the right people on our ships. So the direction of the market is going one way, it's certainly going bigger. I think the latest ship to come into play in a couple of weeks time in early 2024 is going to hold over 7000 passengers on board. 
Our ships, as a comparison, the maximum capacity they will hold is 1,200 guests. So yes, we do have much, much smaller ships. And like I said, there are many, many advantages to this. On board our ships, it's very much a warm and friendly atmosphere on board versus some of the big ships that go more towards a party and busy atmosphere. When you're on a smaller ship, you are treated like an individual. You're not just another cabin number. We also have the highest number of repeat passengers in the whole of the cruising market, which is nearly up to about 70%. Now that speaks volumes in itself. So nearly 70% of the people that cruise with us have cruised with us at least once before, which is massive. We have a very sincere service with our crew. Nothing is scripted. We have more unusual itineraries. In fact, we are the cruise line that has won the Cruise Critic Award five consecutive years for our itineraries. We always look for some new places to take our smaller ships. And again, we'll come on to look at the destinations that we visit later on during uh, tonight's presentation. Tours that take you deeper as well. Now, when you're on a smaller ship, you're obviously on board with less people. And when you're going ashore, you'll be going ashore with less people as well. So we can do more unusual and uh, tours around the world and take you deeper, almost stepping over that tourist line, meeting local people, getting to know the culture, the wildlife and the destination that you're actually visiting. And we are a family run cruise line. So we started 175 years ago with three brothers that started uh, living or were living just outside of Oslo and started their shipping company business on the Oslo Fjord. So this is very much the way the industry is going much, much bigger, much crowded, uh, big ships. We're sticking with our smaller ships. So like I said, 1200 guests. So what does make Fred Olsen Cruise Line spe very special is the fact that we have been sailing 175 years. So when you imagine all those destinations that we've been to in the past and all those different times throughout the year, we know when to take our ships with our guest to the best place at the best possible time. Now, I'm just going to switch over to Duncan. He's going to play a video for us. Now, it's our brand video. It gives you a little bit more about the history and where we're going as a company moving forward into 2024 and 2025 and beyond. It's your time now. It's time to satisfy your wanderlust and experience the wonder of our world. Time to throw off the bow lines, sail away from the safe harbour. Catch the trade winds in your sails and explore. Dream. Discover. 175 years ago, Three brothers in a small town on the shores of Oslo Fjord in Norway also wrestled with the spirit of adventure. It led the Olsen family to buy their first ships and set about discovering the world. Today, we are proud of how far we have sailed. But our pride is not just in the extraordinary places in every corner of the globe. We take our thousands of treasured guests. It's in how we take them there too. From the moment you throw open your cabin curtains to a beautiful sunrise, or emerge on deck to another stunning vista, everything is geared to make your day exceptional. Our people take great pride in their personal attentive service where, for our guests, nothing is ever too much. Our ships are big enough to ensure a great variety of rewarding onboard experiences. But small enough that your cruise with us always feels friendly, warm and personal. And our itineraries are designed afresh every year to make sure you see not only the world's most amazing destinations, but at the very best possible times to see them. In Norway, we have a saying, Ida Besta Selskip. It means, in the best of company. It's how we want you to feel from the moment you embark on a Fred Olsen cruise, that you're welcome, valued, and looked after. But as well as traveling in the best of company, 
we want you to know that you're also traveling the best of companies. Because on a Fred Olsen cruise, 175 years of experience goes into making every single day special. Fred Olsen Cruise Lines, 175 years in every single day. So why Fred Olsen Cruise Lines? Well, first off, we do have very imag imaginative and unusual cruising itineraries. When we look at our itineraries, we always start with a scratch, um, a blank piece of paper. Every time we're planning new itineraries, we don't run bus routes and we always look at how we can improve on previous um, itineraries. So we'll try to do our very best to make sure our ships are in the best possible place at the best possible time of year, whether that's natural phenomena such as the northern lights, the midnight sun, solar eclipses, or whether it's man-made events and attractions around the world. It can be things like the Madeira Flower Festival. We've done New Year's Eve down in Madeira, Sydney, Hong Kong, uh, Singapore we've done the monaco grand prix it's making sure that our ships are in the right place at the right time so that you our guests on board are going to get the best out of that destination that you're visiting we do believe that smaller is better there are so many reasons why one of them being on a small ship we can simply get to places the big ships can't go yes we may want to go to places the big ships are also visiting particularly in the places like uh, norway and also the caribbean and the mediterranean but what we do very differently is we try to avoid the big ships so that when we're in port, it's just us. So that when we're stepping ashore and we are going ashore with the passengers on board our ship, it's not going to be crowded. Um, sometimes you could get four or five cruise ships a day in some ports of call around the world. We try to make it so it's just us. So again, you're not flooding that destination um, with too many tourists so you can enjoy it at your pace family run and determined to do things different to do things our way we're not following the crowded cruising market we're sticking with our smaller ships and also the onboard experience reimagined and we'll come on to this in just a moment so like i said our team change our itineraries every single time we're planning the brochure so we currently got our departures on sale literally from next week right the way through to may 2025 and if you're looking for itineraries after may 2025 then i'm pleased to say that we will soon be releasing um early march is when we're going to be releasing uh, our 2025 2026 itinerary so look out for those so we will never set sail with more than 1,200 guests on board each of our vessels. Now, we do have three ships in our fleet. And again, I'll come on to those in more detail in just a moment. So our ships actually hold a capacity of just over 1,300 guests, but we will never set sail with more than 1,200. The reason why is because we don't want our ships to be overcrowded. We want to ensure there's space around our ships that you can sit and enjoy a coffee. You can sit in one of the bars and certainly there is going to be no fighting for sunbeds or anything like that on board our ships as well. There is plenty of space for you to uh, relax and enjoy sailing, particularly on sea days as well as port days. We are family run, so we are. There's very few cruise lines in the world that are family run. Still to this day, Fred Olsen. We're now in the fifth generation. The family still run and operate the cruise line today. We have our uh, UK head office in Ipswich, and our uh, family. Um, Head office is based in Oslo, still um, just outside of Oslo on the Oslo Fjord. So to this day, we're still very much a family run cruise line. There are so many advantages to being a, a family run cruise line and uh, our business. And one great advantage as a guest on board our ship for being a family cr run cruise line. If ever we're out on an itinerary and there is um, something to that something very special that we actually want to stay in port longer for, or if we want to take a slight detour during our journey, then absolutely we can do that. We don't have to uh, wait uh, for a time zone difference if you've got a head office, particularly over in the US. And also being a family run cruise line, we can make decisions very quickly. We can act upon them. So just to give you a couple of examples of what I mean with this, uh, back in June earlier this year, 
we did a cruise up to the um, very tip of Norway. And on a particular day that we were up there, the wildlife was absolutely outstanding. Some amazing whales, walruses, polar bears, all sorts of wildlife that we were seeing. So the captain actually decided there and then to make that decision and stay longer in port. Um, so that everybody on board could see that amazing wildlife. So we stayed an extra four to five hours. We also have the fastest cruise ships in the world. So that meant that we weren't having a detrimental impact on the next port of call that we were visiting. We'd still be able to have enough time in that next port of call. And again, a few years ago, there was a big volcano erupting down in the Canary Islands. And um, so forth, we decided to circumnavigate that island so that everybody could see the volcano erupting. But of course, it was a safe distance. So let's move on and have a look at the fleet of our ships. So if you have cruised with Fred Olsen before or you've heard of our name and not yet given us a try, I will advise you that during lockdown and COVID times, we'll be the only cruise line in the, in the world to actually go out and buy new ships. So we actually upgraded our fleet. Um, so I'm going to talk to you about our new vessels. So Belletta is now our new flagship and that gave us that opportunity to actually um, pretty much make these ships Fred Olsen ships. We spent a lot of money upgrading them and making them Fred ships. So Belletta has actually um, been named after the great great grandmother of Fred Olsen and she's our flagship and she has been cruising in and out of Southampton uh, particularly over the last few months and she's currently on a grand voyage going all the way around Africa so um, she's down in the Maldives and the Seychelles as we speak lucky her um, to give you an idea passenger capacity as I said just over 1300 guests but we will never set sail with more than 1200 she has 690 cabins 642 crew now, at the very top of that ship, you have a retractable roof over the top of the swimming pool, which is a great advantage. So wherever you are in the world, if the weather's not so great, we can close that roof and we can enjoy the swimming pool on the top deck as well. Um, we have a two-tiered theatre. We also have a two-tiered restaurant. Now, at the very uh, front of that ship, right out on the bow, is also accessible for our guests on board. So wherever you are in the world, if you're cr uh, crossing the equator, as one of our ships did yesterday, um, if you are in the Norwegian fjords and you want to be right out on the bow of the ship, if you want to do your Titanic poses, by all means, you can do them. Um, but it's a really, really great place to get out there and see uh, the, the destination of the uh, places that you're cruising to. The tiered aft end as well, it's not just cabins at the back of the ship. You have a tiered aft end, you've got swimming pools at the top deck on the aft as well, so you can get out and enjoy the full access of the uh, ship. We also have the promenade deck as well that you can walk all the way around. Um, so again, no matter where you are on the ship, you can get down and see all views. So she's a really beautiful ship. Once she's back from her grand voyage um, in the spring, she'll then be cruising in and out of Liverpool. That will be a home departure port in 2024. So our ships do move around our UK departure ports. We have a few of them. And again, I'll talk to you a little bit more about those in just a moment. But our ships do move around. So if you're only cruising out of Liverpool or only cruising out of Southampton with us, then by all means, you're going to have a change of ships um, every uh, couple of years. Borealis and Belletta are sister ships. It's actually quite difficult to work out which ship you're on. Um, Borealis has been cruising in and out of Liverpool all summer. So Borealis and Belletta are actually swapping uh, UK departure ports. Now, Borealis um, is going to be starting her world cruise very soon, very early January. She's going to be going off on around the world and she won't be back also until the springtime. So we have Belletta out on a grand voyage and Borealis uh, taking off on her world cruise in 2024. Similar capacity. Like I said to you, the ships are virtually identical. Um, a lot of people also have a misconception that being on a small ship, you're not going to get a balcony cabin. Absolutely, you are. Uh, we do have a lot of balcony cabins on board um, our vessels as well. Then moving on to the baby of the fleet is the Balmoral. She used to be our flagship um, pre-COVID times, and now she's the baby of the fleet. Um, in terms of being the baby of the fleet, you'll see that the passenger capacity is roughly the same as Borealis and Valletta at just over 1,300 guests, but she's actually quite a little bit smaller. 
Uh, that gives great advantages to Balmoral. She can cruise, as you can see here, through the Keel Canal. She is uh, short enough, she's narrow enough that she can get under some of the bridges um, that even the Valletta and Borealis aren't able to do. So we're keeping hold of uh, Balmoral. She's a very special, very much a loved ship. And as you can see from the aft decks here, you've got the swimming pool out the back and you've got the aft decks. You've also got a swimming pool on the top deck as well. So she's an absolutely beauty of a ship. Uh, she's currently cruising around, I believe she's been in Hamburg today and she's been cruising the Christmas markets. Uh, she'll be back in uh, the UK in just a few days' time, ready to go off down to the Canary Islands for a Christmas cruise down to Madeira as well for the fireworks. Balmoral will be cruising in and out of our Scottish departure port of Rosyth, Newcastle, Dover, Portsmouth and Southampton as well. So we do move her around um, and she'll spend a couple of months cruising out of each of our UK departure ports um, in 2024. Um, I just wanted to show you some cabins so you've got an idea. Most of the cabins are pretty much the same across the fleet. Uh, so this, of course, is one of our premier suites. It's taken from the Valletta, but it will give you an idea. So if you want a nice big balcony, you want some big space on board. Now, because we do have the highest number of repeat passengers in the whole of the cruising market, um, we do have a lot of regulars that book early, particularly if they know the cabins they want and the destinations they want to visit. Um, so, of course, being on a smaller ship as well, the cabins, some of the itineraries do sell pretty quickly. Um, and of course, so do the balconies and the suites. So my advice, if you've got your eye on something, uh, don't hesitate, because um, if you do wait, then obviously it may get sold out pretty quickly. So just bear that in mind. Um, we're very much geared towards the British market. So everything on board is in the English language and the English language only. 99.9% .9 of our passengers on board are British. We have um, English plugs on board our ships. We have every single cabin has a fridge. If you want it to be stocked as a mini bar, absolutely, you can have that. Um, we've also got tea and coffee making facilities in every single cabin on board our ships as well. So very much geared towards the British market. This is a balcony uh, suite on board the Balletta as well. So if you don't necessarily want the big premier suite, you've got the option to go slightly smaller and, of course, slightly cheaper. Now, the next image I'm going to show you is very, very similar to the balcony suite. However, it's what we call one of our terrace cabins. So the main difference here is that you have on the balcony suite, you have a balcony uh, that you can go out and it's a private balcony. Now the terrace suite, which is this image, is exactly the same pretty much on the inside, but instead of going out onto a private balcony, it's what we call our terrace. So it'll have a sliding door straight out onto the promenade deck. Um, and then again, promenade deck is the deck that you can walk all the way around. So this type of cabin you will only find on board the Borealis and the Balletta. So uh, really, really lovely cabins. And also then moving down the ship, we then have inside, uh, sorry, picture window cabins, as you can see here. So instead of portholes, you get a really nice big uh, picture window that you can look out of. And again, the beds can be pushed together to make a double if you wish to do so or kept separate as, as uh, twin cabins, uh, sorry, twin beds. Um, a lot of our cabins also have uh, a cabin with a bath with a shower over the top. If you're on Balletta and Borealis, that cabin with the bathtub would be a jacuzzi bath, which is very, very nice indeed. Or if you prefer a shower only, again, let us know. And we do have cabins that have the walk-in showers as well. Moving on to the onboard experience. Now, what we really like to do different here at Fred Olsen Cruise Lines is bring the destination alive that you're visiting. So wherever we are in the world, we can try to accommodate the entertainment, the food um, of the destination you're visiting. So if you're down in Spain, we bring paella into the menus and things like that on board. Like I said, it's very much geared towards the British market. So the food is very well catered towards the British market. But we do try to add in a twist of the destination that you're visiting. We have very high quality entertainment on board. Again, a misconception is that smaller ships don't have big entertainment. Absolutely, we do. And even on our grand voyages and our world cruises, our entertainment will change every single evening. 
Now, the main thing and the difference with smaller ships is that not everybody can eat and dine at exactly the same time. So we do have two set dining times. We have 6.30 and we also have 8.30. And exactly the same with the entertainment. We have first sitting. So most people go to dinner, then they will go and watch the show on first sitting. And the second sitting will have dinner they will also go and watch the show afterwards as well. So we do have a cast of 10 on board the Borealis, Boletta and the Balmoral doing our entertainment. We also have um, guest entertainment acts coming on. We might have comedians, classical musicians, um, all types of different entertainment as well. And again, if you're on a world cruise or a grand voyage, that will also change. It's not always going to be the same. We'll fly people, our guest entertainment in and out. Um, so again, we do um, very high end West End shows, those sorts of things on board our ships. And um, it, the entertainment is absolutely great. On Valletta and Borealis, again, it's a two tier theatre. So you very much feel like you are watching some very high quality West End production shows. We also have an auditorium. It does double up as a cinema if we need it to. Um, but the auditorium is where we can do our cooking demonstrations. So it's a really popular venue on board our ships. And it's where the chefs will um, look at local cuisine specialities of the destinations that we're visiting. And they will cook and do their demonstrations in front of you. And of course, there is an opportunity for you to get involved and do some cooking yourself if you wish. And also you get to taste it too, which is a great thing. Now, one of my particular favourite areas on board our ships is our spa and wellness centre. So we do have a spa. We also have a fitness centre. We have swimming pools and jacuzzis that, of course, are heated. And we have this, which is our thermal suite, which is absolutely incredible. Um, and it's only £10 per person per hour to go in here and enjoy the spa and wellness centre. The fitness centre and, of course, fitness classes are free of charge. And our fitness uh, centre is open every day from 8am to 8pm. But it's the thermal uh, spa in the wellness centre that you'll most likely find me on board our ships. And again, it's right at the front of the ship and you've got really, really gorgeous panoramic views. And when you book that out, it's just for you. So if you're traveling with a party of up to eight people, you could book into the wellness center. If it's just you and one other, uh, then you've got that whole area to yourself. So you've got those heated stone beds, you've got the jacuzzi and whirlpools, you've got your saunas and steam rooms. So it's really, really beautiful, relaxing area on board our ships. So here's the fitness center. Um, and again, it, it can be quite popular. Um, we do yoga, Pilates classes. Um, if you need some help um, working out how the equipment works, anything like that, we have our fitness instructors on board for you. Now, another great thing about our ships is that we also have ribs. Now, ribs stand for rigid inflatable boats. Now, we have two of these on each of our vessels. Now, at the moment, there is no charge. So wherever we are in the world, if the weather's on our side, we'll launch them and we can whiz around on these amazing ribs. And you get about half an hour, 45 minutes per session. And all you need to do is just sign up at guest services once you're on board um, at your, and you'll be given a certain time slot that you can join the ribs. Like I said, it is obviously uh, weather dependable. But in places when you're in places like Norway, Greenland, Iceland, the Caribbean, um, absolutely amazing experience to go out on board our ribs and just get that little bit closer. Now, like I mentioned to you about the dining, so here are the dining times. We also have speciality dining aboard our ships as well. So again, a misconception is that being on a small ship, there's only one or two restaurants to dining. Absolutely not. You've got your main dining restaurants, um, whether you want first or second sitting for dinner. Now, that's your choice when you make your booking. So again, the earlier you book, the more choice you're going to have. If you book late, you may only have second sitting as a dining option because first sitting is, is more popular. Um, if you're not quite sure, maybe you've never cruised before, maybe it's your first time with Fred Olsen and you're not sure how it's going to go. My advice would be book first sitting. And if it's not working out for you, you can swap to second sitting when you're on board our ships. If you book second sitting and you work out it's not quite for you and you want to go to first sitting, it's unlikely you're going to be able to get that first sitting because everybody else wants first sitting and it's generally going to be full. So my advice is book first and swap to second rather than the other way around. We also have a buffet restaurant as well. So if you don't want to go to your main dining table and restaurant every night, 
Of course, you don't have to. You can go to the buffet style of restaurant as well. Then we have our speciality dining restaurant. So this picture here is called Colors and Taste Restaurant, and it's very much an Asian fusion mix of food. And then we have Vasco. Vasco is our Indian go and -in cuisine. Um, and I can never, ever decide which is my favorite restaurant because the, the food is absolutely outstanding. And most people go to these restaurants more than once during their cruise because they find the food amazing. Now, to pre-book, if you want to go into these speciality restaurants, it's, it is only £10 per person, which is absolutely outstanding value. If you book on board, it's £15 per person. Like I said, a lot of people discover these on board uh, two or three days into their cruise, and they certainly do go back time and time again because the food is absolutely outstanding. So they're the two speciality restaurants. And again, we have those on each of our vessels. We also have a drinks package. Our drinks package is only $24.99 per person per day. Um, now, at the moment, we do have free all-inclusive drinks package on the majority of our departures if you book by the 31st of January. However, um, if you're not quite sure if the drinks package is for you, you do have the option of having an onboard spending credit if you want it. But I'm just going to show you some prices just to give you an idea. So our cocktails are priced at £7 per, um, per drink. Glass of wine is £6. Pint of lager is £5. Now, we do get a lot of people actually coming on board our ships and telling us that actually drinks are more expensive in their pubs at home. So the prices on board are very, very reasonable. Now, if you're actually cruising with us for five nights or less, the drinks package is £35 per person per day. And at the moment, that's also included in the uh, free drinks package if you book by the 31st of January. So it just gives you an idea. Now, only you can decide if you want to, if the, you think the drinks package is worthwhile to you. But like I said, um, the great thing about a drinks package is that you get off of your cruise at the end without a bar bill. And who loves a holiday without a bar bill? Now, I'm also just going to mention tipping because we do get generally a lot of questions about our tipping policy. So we recommend it's five pounds per person per day uh, for guests over 12 and above. Now, again, a lot of people have misconception that Fred Olsen Cruise Lines is an adult only cruise line. We are not. Um, we just don't have all the facilities that other cruise lines do have for children. And it's generally the children that we get on board our ships are generally cruising as a multi-generational family holiday. So you have your children, your parents, and then your grandparents. Um, our cruise departures never normally have more than 10, 15 children per itinerary. Uh, so it's, it's very few children that we do get on board. And of course, school holidays, Christmas, Easter, we're going to get a few more. But generally speaking, we're not, it's not a cruise line that we're going to be overrun with children because we generally don't have the facilities for them. Um, but saying that, again, the kids, um, there is a kids club during the school holidays as well, if we have more than 10 children on board. And again, if you have any more questions about children, by all means, we can help you out with that one. So tipping is based on £5 per person per day, which gets split between your cabin stewardess and your waiter. Now, the moment we have our turn of year offer, it's called um, 175 years and every single day. Now, this is the offer that we have. So book by the 31st of January and we will give you either a free drinks package or an onboard spending credit. Now, the free drinks package is worth $24.99 per person per day for departures over 35 nights. Uh, I beg your pardon for departures over five nights. And um, if you don't want the drinks package and you want to take an onboard spending credit instead, the onboard spending credit is working out at 15 pounds per person per day. And you can use that money on board for anything you like. If you go to the salon and get your hair done, your nails done, any spa treatments, or even shore excursions if you're booking them on board our ships also. So let's move on and look at the exciting bit. Now, obviously, there are many different reasons why people choose a cruise, but a lot of the reason is because of the destination that it's visiting. So let's have a look where in the world we can take you. So being a family run cruise line, the world is literally our oyster. We can go anywhere in the world we want to go. Now, we have cruise departures, anything from two nights to over 102 around the world. Now, we cruise every single day of the year and we have various UK departure ports as well. So we have Rosyth up in Edinburgh. We have Newcastle in the northeast. 
Dover, Portsmouth, Southampton and Liverpool. Now, depending on where you're setting sail from. So, for example, if you were leaving from Newcastle, you could do a Norway cruise in five nights. Exactly the same itinerary. If you were leaving Southampton would give you a seven night itinerary. So, again, we've planned the itineraries perfectly for the departure ports that you're leaving from as well. Now, if you're living in the south, as I do, don't disregard the departures leaving from the north. Sometimes we can help you get to the departure port. Sometimes we offer free door to door taxi services. If you're living in the south, you might decide to fly up to Rosyth or Newcastle and vice versa. If you're living in the north, don't disregard the southern departures either because the whole host of itineraries available right the way through to 2025. Now, in every single port of call around the world, we also do journey guides. So these are journey guides to tell you about not only what's happening on board our ships during your voyage, but also what you can do when you step ashore in each port of call. Now, if you are thinking of a cruise, but you're not quite sure what to do when you're ashore or how much these things are going to cost or how much time do you have in port, just let your um, agent know, not just travel. And by all means, we can send you these in advance of booking a cruise. We have um, every single itinerary that we've done in 2023. So if you're thinking of going to Iceland in Greenland, we can tell you and show you everything that we did this year. Same thing with Norway. If you want to go to the Mediterranean, the Caribbean, even our world cruises, if you want to know how much the shore excursions are going to cost you, uh, what you can do in ports of call, when can you visit, all these sorts of questions that you may have before booking your cruise, we can answer them and we can email you these across. So it's a real great way to get an insight into the destination before you even book your cruise. So now I'm going to talk to you about a snapshot of our itineraries. If I was going to talk to you about them all, we'd still be in it this time next week talking about them. Now, obviously, Norway is our bread and butter. We are a Norwegian family run cruise line. We like to think that we show you Norway better than any other cruise line out there. Why? Because we've got smaller ships that we can take you into the smaller nooks and crannies of the fjords of um, uh, Norway. Again, being on a smaller ship, it's going to be less crowded. So if you're in places like Flom, doing the Flom Railway, and it's just us in Portugal, everybody on the ship is going to be able to get onto that train and do the railway up to the top of the mountain. If you were on a ship that had five or 6,000 people, that train in Flom cannot hold five or 6,000 people. So it's going to be potluck who gets on the train and who doesn't. So these are great advantages of being on a smaller ship. So this particular itinerary, now we'd go to Norway every single month, uh, sorry, every single season throughout the year. This particular one is leaving from Southampton in June. But like I said, if you were leaving on a similar itinerary and you were leaving from Newcastle, it would only take you five days to get um, to do the same itinerary instead of seven or eight. So we go to places like Flom, Olvik, Lysafjord. Being a smaller ship, we can cruise right underneath the bridges right underneath the electricity cables that run across the top of the Norwegian fjords, we can get you closer and right into the um, heart of these destinations. So this will give you an idea of some of the cruising that we can go in and around uh, Norway. There are also um, fjords that we go down, they're dead ends, but we take you down there because they're so dramatic and they're so narrow that it's just absolutely amazing scenery. We can do the inside passage as well, cruising throughout Norway, whereas big ships have to go out, back into the open ocean and back up around, whereas we carry on cruising through the nooks and crannies of the Norwegian fjords. We also go to Norway in the winter. Now, this particular cruise is coming up in February 2024. Now, if you're not aware, the Northern Lights go in an 11 year cycle and we're currently at the peak of this 11 year cycle. So if you've not seen the Northern Lights, now is the absolute best time to go and see them. So you've got anything between November and March. Um, we've also got a few departures in November next year as well. So really, this is the key itinerary. If you want to go and see the Northern Lights, this is absolutely the best way to see it. Now, of course, Norway can be a quite expensive country. But if you're going on a ship, um, you don't need to worry about all your food and your drinks. You just need to make sure that you're out on decks to see the Northern Lights. Now, again, being on a ship to see the Northern Lights, if there's cloud coverage when we're in port of call, we can get on the ship and move out into the ocean. 
where there's no cloud coverage so that you're going to get the best glimpse of these northern lights. Of course, there is no guarantee, but we'll do our absolute best for you. I personally have done this departure four or five times and I've never not seen the lights. So um, I do strongly recommend going up to Tromsø and Alta are the best places in the top of Norway to see the northern lights. You've also got Narvik and Bode, which are very, very popular uh, ports of call on this particular itinerary as well. But it's not just about the northern lights. What you can do in the daytime as well is absolutely amazing. You can go husky sleigh riding, reindeer sleigh riding. You can go to the ice bar, the ice hotel, um, reindeer reindeer sledding, snowmobiling, skiing, Nordic walking. There is so much on offer in Norway. And again, people have a misconception that in Norway, it's dark every day in the winter, all day. It is not. If you go in February, you're going to have daylight, say, between half past 10, 11 in the morning, right the way through till about three o'clock in the afternoon. So again, there's going to be an opportunity to go out and see Norway in the winter, which is just as beautiful in the summer as well one of my favourite itineraries. Um, earlier this year, I was um, fortunate enough to have cruised myself um, over to the Dutch tulips and waterways. Now, this particular cruise has been planned over the first bank holiday in May. So again, if you've never cruised with us and you want a taster, these five night cruises are perfect for that. And like I said earlier on, this cruise has been timed perfectly for the tulips to be in bloom. So Kirkenhof Gardens, just outside of the city of Amsterdam, is only open for about six to eight weeks of the year while the tulips are in full bloom. And of course, we're gonna be there to take you. Um, a grand, great advantage of being on a smaller ship is that we can dock in the heart of these destinations, right in the heart of the city of Amsterdam, right in the heart of the city of Rotterdam. We can also cruise the Kiel Canal, so we're small enough to get under these amazing bridges to get you into the heart of these destinations. So when we dock in Amsterdam, the gangway is down and you are there right next to the central train station. So walking distance from the ship is minimal. You don't have to jump on a bus to go into the city. You are there. And again, we do lots of overnight stays as well in some amazing cities around the world. So you don't have to come back at a certain time. You can go out all night long and come back um, when the ship's ready to set sail. Another great itinerary, we, we're just doing this right now actually, is the Christmas markets cruise. Uh, so we go around Europe doing the Christmas markets. Again, these itineraries will change every year. So if you see an itinerary now, it may not be in the brochure the following year. So my advice, again, snap at it once you see it because the itineraries are always changing. This particular one is a six night departure on board Balmoral in December next year. We'll take you up the River Seine right as far as we can go into Rouen and we'll take you to Antwerp as well. Now Antwerp is a port of call that has a one ship per day policy so that you know when we are in Antwerp, it is only gonna be us in port. And again, when the gangway's down, we're in the heart of the city. You couldn't be any closer. You can see the Christmas markets from the ship, even from your cabin, uh, which is absolutely amazing. It's literally that close. Discovering Scandinavian capitals and islands. So this is a departure going in April. It's a 15 night cruise. So again, you'll notice that departure dates vary as well on our itineraries as do, sorry, as do the um, duration. So this one's taken in Oslo, Tallinn, Helsinki. Um, we also have a similar itinerary doing um, this departure out of Dover next summer, but it's also taking in the Tall Ships Parade and also Kiel Week in Kiel in Germany. So again, some real great itineraries with some amazing events and festivals. We also have the cultural Adriatic discovery as well, taking you to places like Split, Dubrovnik. It's not just ports of call heading north. We go down to the Mediterranean also, so you can get some warm sunshine and beautiful scenery. We also do the Azores. The Azores are very popular departures. This particular one is doing the solar eclipse cruise, uh, crossing the solar eclipse in April 2024 out in the middle of the Azores, um, which is a 13 night departure. So it's taking in Praia de Vitoria, Ponte Delgada, Madeira, and back to mainland Portugal, Lexois, and you've got St. Malo and Brest on the way out as well. Again, the Azores, if you've not yet been, beautiful, beautiful green volcanic islands, um, where there again is so much wildlife to see on this one. Um, and we often see lots of um, whales on this particular voyage. 
Talking of Wales, we also do volc um, Wales and volcanic um, ice landscapes of Iceland. Now, obviously, Iceland's been in the news today, but um, we do circumnavigations of Iceland. So we've got waterfalls, we've got the Blue Lagoon, the geysers, the earthquake fault lines, the volcanoes. There is so much going on in um, Iceland. This particular voyage is a, a circumnavigation of Iceland. And we normally stop at Torshaven or the Faroe Islands, either on the way up or the way down, and sometimes the Scottish islands as well. So it's a real great itinerary. And generally speaking, we also have Orca. Now, Orca are the wildlife charity that we have on board as well. So if you want to get out on the decks and spot some wildlife and you want to know what you've seen, having Orca on board is great because they can help answer those questions that we may have. What whale was that I just spotted? Or I haven't seen anything where is the best place to look and so that you can get a glimpse of some amazing wildlife and bird life as well as marine life now this is very unusual itinerary and it makes a lot of people uh, very intrigued now if you've been everywhere and you don't know where you want to go this is a great itinerary it's called the fred olsen mystery cruise now it simply is that you don't know where you're going so you step on board in november next year and it's an 11 night cruise from southampton now, you simply don't know where you're going. Now, the biggest question we get asked is if you don't know where you're going, well, what do I pack? Well, it is November, 11 nights. So my advice would be layers, um, a jacket, those sorts of things. What we do on board is we turn off the satellite navigation system for you guys. So you don't know where you're going. Your phone, your mobile phone is not going to ping and tell you welcome to France or welcome to Spain. Now, when you're at dinner, when you're asleep, or maybe even when you're watching the show, the ship will do a 180 spin and turn the complete opposite direction. So we will keep you guessing at every single corner that we turn or, um, on the mystery cruise. Um, it really is amazing. Sometimes in the past, we've gone north, we've gone east, we've gone west. Um, and we try to keep people guessing all the time. And the atmosphere on board is absolutely electric on these mystery cruises. It is so much fun. And you'll see everybody out at 6 a.m. on the bow of the ship guessing where we are. Where are we going to be today? Um, so it really is great fun. You can also book your shore excursions on this. Now, if you don't know where you're going, what we'll do is we'll tell you that there might be some amazing scenery or a famous building that you can go and see. So again, we won't tell you where you're going in the clues with our uh, shore excursions either. So we try to keep everything a mystery. We also have world cruises. Like I said earlier on, we've got um, Valletta right now going around all the way around Africa. And the Borealis is going to be setting sail on her 2024 world cruise in just a few weeks time. So to give you an idea, this is the 2025 world cruise. Now, again, we change our itineraries all the time. So this particular one is heading from Southampton down to um, Praia, down to the... Um, coast of South America, all the way around to the bottom, so Buenos Aires, um, all the way around to Valparaiso, Robinson Crusoe Island, ac across to places like Easter Island, Tahiti, Bora Bora, Tonga, round to Sydney, south coast of Australia, a lot of cruise ships go up the east coast, so we're doing south coast, we've got Sydney, Melbourne, Hobart and Tasmania, around to Albany and Perth, Fremantle, across to Port Louis, Port Reunion, Cape Town, Wolvis Bay, back up to Dakar, back up to Tenerife and back to Southampton. So an amazing cruise. Now, at the moment, we have not split this down into sectors. We will be doing that, hopefully, in the not too distant future. So if you haven't got the time or the money to do the whole world cruise, we will be able to split that down so you can fly in and out of certain ports of call around the world. In 2025, our grand voyage is going to be going out in January. And this one is taking in the... Um, holy festival in india so it's an 82 night voyage it's not all the way around the world it's concentrating on asia um, in particular india where we will be for the famous um, holy festival and taking in places like yangon or burma ho chi minh um, borneo singapore um, kuala lumpur sri lanka so with amazing ports of call in asia as well as coming back through the mediterranean and doing the suez canal so what else is new at Fred Olsen Cruise Lines? Well, recently we've put some new itineraries on sale for 2025. These have only been on sale since November. Uh, this one's going out on the 5th of Jan. It's taking in the Dalmatian coastline 
from Dover for 22 nights. Now, we've had quite a, a lot of bookings on this particular one already. Um, and this one's taken in Dubrovnik Split, um, Kotor, um, Valletta, um, and then um, just touching on North Africa as well. So it's a really beautiful itinerary taking in the Med. And we've also got this one, which is um, the Italian Scenic Riviera, September 2025, again out of Liverpool. And this one's taking in places like Genoa, Portofino, and also Corsica, which we don't generally go to very often. So it's really nice to see Corsica in the itinerary. So just to finalise, um, I'm just going to quickly talk to you about some of the offers that we currently have. So we've spoken about the um, main January, December, January booking offer. If anybody is um, a solo traveller, we do have cruises with no single supplements. Um, these are often occupying a twin cabin for no single supplements. So we're not penalising you for travelling on your own. It's not every cruise, it's not every cabin. So um Speak to your not just travel agent, and we will do our best to try and find you some of these great deals with no single supplements. If you've not cruised with Fred Olsen before, or maybe you've cruised with us before, um, the offer is out there for everybody that steps aboard with us. If you book your cruise more than 12 weeks in advance and you step on board and you don't like it for whatever reason, um, let us know within the first 48 hours of being on board. We will fly you home at the next available port of call. And once you get home, we'll give you a full refund on the cost of your cruise. It's called the enjoyment promise and the Olsen way promise. So we really can't be fairer than that. Give us a try if it's your first time with Fred Olsen and you really don't like it. Like I said, you don't have to um, pay for your cruise. We can uh, give you that full refund when you get home. And in the eight years that we've been running this campaign, I can tell you now, only two people have ever taken us up on this. So again, it's a really, really strong promise that um, you are going to come on board with us and you are going to enjoy your cruise. But for any reason you don't, let us know. We'll fly you home and we'll give you a full refund on the cost of that cruise. So our Tenavir campaign, just again, uh, we've got lead-in prices from 699. We've got solo offers from 999, free drinks or onboard spend, depending on what you as our guest would like as an offer. It's valid now from the 1st of December right the way through to the 31st of January. Um, it's on most departures. It's not every cruise, but it's on about 95% of our departures uh, going out in 2024 and 2025. If you have cruised with us before, uh, you'll certainly be an Oceans member. And if it's been uh, with inside the last five years, then if you do book and you book before the 22nd of December, then we will give you an extra 5% sailing. So all you need to do is quote the promo code OCEANS24 and you can save an additional 5% of the cost of that um, holiday, which is great. So you do need to book before the 22nd of December. So you've got a few days left to go. Um, but the drinks and the solo offers or the onboard spend offer finishes on the 31st of January. Now, we are an award-winning cruise line. We've won lots of awards. As I mentioned previously, we've won Cruise Critic, the bottom left, for five consecutive years for the best cruise line for best itineraries. We've become highly commended for solo travellers. We have a lot of solo travellers cruise with us because we're not big ships. They don't feel overwhelmed. We have uh, won group awards as well in the past. Um, and we've also won a lot of awards, particularly on the top row that you see there for our customer service awards. Now, a lot of those awards we actually won when we weren't sailing because we weren't allowed to sail back in 2020. So it's really amazing that we won awards when we weren't sailing as a cruise line. Um, and we've recently actually um, won a few more awards this year. So we're just needing to uh, update this um, presentation slide once we've got our new logos. So that leaves me just to thank you for your time this evening. Uh, we will be opening it up for any questions. Um, I hope it's given you a quick insight into Fred Olsen Cruise Line. What makes Fred, uh, Fred Olsen Cruise Line very different? My advice, give us a go. Uh, pick some short cruises if you want to. If you want to go for longer ones, give us a go because um, you will probably join that 70% of people that cruise with us 
time and time again. We have a lot of people that say, I love Fred Olsen. I wish I found you sooner. I'm never going anywhere else again. Um, and the reasons for that is because we're small ships. We're very, very friendly. The crew will remember you. They'll remember your favorite tipple. They'll remember you, what you like, dislike for your food, all these sorts of things, because we can, because we're on a smaller ship. So please give us a, give us a go. Any questions in the future, just reach out and let us know and we will help you as much as possible. Thank you. Kerry, amazing. I love it. I mean, I was so fortunate to go on Valletta earlier on in the year and she was docked up in Valencia. And, you know, as you know, it's been a long, long time for me, but I got on board and I was like, oh my God, wow, this is stunning. And I had the best experience. And I have to say, you know, the, the food was divine, the, the service was some of the best service I've ever seen at sea. Um, and the ship was just stunning. Just a reference from me with the terrace cabins. I actually mm -hmm. viewed terrace cabin. Um, and guys, if you are thinking, you know, I'm not sure because it isn't a private balcony, go for it. All I'm gonna say to you is go for it. Those mm -hmm. cabins are stunning and the beautiful chairs just outside the doors. And you know, when you're, do oh, it's, I got goosebumps. It was amazing, absolutely fantastic. <laughs> um, you know, just to everything about the brand and your Fred Olsen Cruise Lines to me represent fantastic value, fantastic service and what's on offer. I love the fact that if there's something going on in a port, the captain will delay departure. I love all of that. And you're not going to affect your onward itinerary. I just love that real personal touch and feel. So, you know, if anybody does, and lots of people saying, thank you, Kerry, an amazing you're brilliant welcome. presentation. Thank you. They loved it. Um, you know, one. I've just got one word from one, one person who says, amazing. So um, <laughs> my advice, absolutely um, get onto your Not Just Travel consultant that invited you um, to the to the, to, to the webinar this evening, I can't get my words out, I'm too excited. Um, <laughs> th those of you that have um, yeah, been invited by your Notch Travel Consultant to the webinar this evening, reach out to them and they'll absolutely um, help you with your forward cruise plans for Fred Olsen Cruise Line. Just a question come in. Um, with regards to the countries you travel to where a visa is required, do you have a company that you work with? Is it something that you help, the, help us with? Yeah, we do. Most of the visas would be visa on arrival. Um, the only destinations that that wouldn't apply to is places like India that you would need to prearrange your own visa. Again, we've got um, agencies that we can help you with do that. You'd need to get your ESTA if you were going to America or Canada. Same with Australia. Um, for smaller places, um, places like Burma, Indonesia, the Philippines, all those sorts of visas are done on arrival. Um, and again, you don't need to worry about those. If there's a charge for these visas, sometimes there is. Um, most of the time it may be in US dollars. We simply add that to your onboard account. If you're booking a world cruise, uh, we can advise you of all the destinations that you're visiting. But like I said, most of them is going to be Australia, New Zealand, India and America and Canada. And they would generally all be done on online for you as well. Yeah. Excellent. But we're here to help as much as possible. Yeah, absolutely. And I have to say my experience of speaking to your guys at the contact centre has been, again, you know, fantastic. The knowledge, the care that's taken. It isn't just a phone call. They really care about the customers that they're looking Absolutely. Up. Yeah. And again, in the future, if, if you've got any questions or your um, not just travel agent has any questions, I used to work on board. I spent seven years um, and that included two and a half world cruises. So, um there aren't many questions that I can't answer, but if there should be any in the future, just let me know and I can help you with them. Or um, certainly if I don't know the answer, I will find the answer out for you. That's one of the fantastic benefits we have of working with Fred Olsen Cruise Lines here at Not Just Travel. Your your knowledge and where you've life on board, you can really, really help. And, you know, anybody that has any questions, we know we get those answers really quickly. Just turning to your loyalty programme, um, can you just explain a little bit, if you can, a, a little bit about the loyalty programme and some of the benefits of that? Absolutely. Yeah. So, um Every night you spend on board with us, you get a point. And obviously, the more points you get, the more benefits and discounts that you get as well. So we have bronze level with anything from one night to 30 nights. Um, and generally, that would give you discounts when you're booking your next cruise more than um, a year in advance. 
Um, as you work up your way to silver, gold, platinum levels, then the time frame that you book your next cruise to still get your discounts would be shorter. So it could be six months, nine months, uh, those sorts of things. And everybody um, would generally get 5% discount off of their next cruise once they've done their first one. Now, what we've also found quite an interesting stat, actually, is this particular year, 2023, we've seen more cruises come to Fred Olsen Cruise Lines than we've ever seen before, mainly coming from other cruise lines. So our new to Fred percentage is, is actually quite high at the moment for, for 2023. And 20% of our guests that cruise with us for the very first time leave our ships having booked another cruise on board which is absolutely incredible. So again, it goes to show how many people love our ships. They love the itineraries. Now, if you are booking again on board our ships, once you've cruised with us for the first time, um, or the 10th or the 100th time with us, then um, your booking will automatically go back to your same Not Just Travel agent as well. So you're not losing any benefits and discounts that your Not Just Travel agent will be um, would give you as well. So it's guaranteed that any bookings on board automatically go back to the same travel agent that you book with. So it's great. Benefits for the benefits for the customer on board. Yeah, lots. And I have to say again, you know, I thought your onboard sales team were absolutely amazing. They they hosted me when I went on board and they were absolutely fantastic. I couldn't praise them enough and what a fantastic day. Guys, that brings us to the end of our webinar this evening. Thank you so much for joining us. Remember, we're going into a really busy time of the year. Do reach out to your Not Just Travel consultant. Now is the time to start making those memorable plans and sailing with Fred Olsen Cruise Lines. Kerry, thank you so much for your time. You're and welcome. I wish you a Merry Christmas. You as well. Thanks, everyone.